quickly to get back to uh, passion and, and, and uh, epitaphs, I would just tell you that, that in my career, I really, I, I didn't end up doing anything I planned to do. All my plans got blown out. As I told a smaller group earlier today, I totally failed at some of the things I tried to do. So I, was, I had to change because I was a failure at what I'd done. Uh, I ended up places far greater than I had ever planned, and I think the one common denominator that helped me get there was that I never did anything for which I did not have a passion. How does that tie in to an epitaph? It ties in because uh, I started tying the two together when I began to realize that part of the passion needs to be recognizing who you are and what you're trying to accomplish with your life as much as how successful you are and what have you achieved. I got hit upside the head not too many years ago when I was asked to write the memorial words for my father when he died, the, the words for his marker at his graveside. It's interesting, but I sat there thinking as I realized that I had this responsibility. I'm one of six siblings. And uh, I thought about what I wanted to put, what would he want me to put. And let me tell you what, I never thought one word about anything he had achieved in his business or professional life, ever. And he had been successful under many definitions. Never occurred to me. All I thought about was who he was, how much he loved his wife of 62 years, his children, his friends. I thought about his laughter. I thought about the way he sang off key, but all the time. I thought about the way he'd whistle when he'd come home from work. As a child, sitting in the front bed or laying in the front bedroom, I knew he was home because I could hear him whistling, no matter how bad his day was. So what I realized was that his epitaph was not up to me to write. He had already written his epitaph. He wrote it with his life. And that's when it crystallized to me that that's what we're all doing. We're all writing our epitaphs as we go through this life on earth. Uh, I think that, that it caused me to change the way I was, to change my focus and my priorities. I started looking back and thinking about other epitaphs that were being written in front of me, good and bad. I mentioned I was in the Naval. I was a Naval officer. I was reassigned to the same ship, so I was on the same ship my whole almost two and a half years. I had two Naval captains. Uh, I was a full lieutenant. First captain, uh, graduated from Annapolis, tall, erect, stern, uh, good, had a passion for what he was doing, uh, made the life of almost everyone on that ship miserable. Second captain, honestly, the day I met him, he looked like Colombo in a naval uniform. I may be dating myself, but, but he was pretty disheveled looking for a captain coming on to take command of a ship. Uh, he had a passion also for what he was doing. He had already been passed over for Admiral. He wasn't going to make it. That wasn't his goal in life. And he made the life of every single person on that ship better. By all earthly measurements, my first captain, who did make it to Admiral, was a greater success than my second captain, who retired not long after he left our ship. By all earthly measurements. But I will tell you that the first captain, in my opinion, was not a success. My second captain, Captain Mallard, was a success beyond all words. My first captain was building, busy building a resume. My second captain was busy building a life. One more thing on, on epitaphs. Obviously, as I was thinking about all this a number of years ago and continue to do, I thought, one of what people in my life would write about me right now if I left this earth. And I've got to admit to you that, that the one, the one time that I thought about of when an epitaph could have been written for me was one of the most painful experiences of my life. Uh, I, was, uh, I had been with Interstate Johnson Lane for a few years. I had left to go help a family situation down in Greenville, South Carolina. They were asking me to come back as president. I decided that day that I would. Peggy and I had talked about it. Couldn't wait for my two twins to come home from grammar school to uh, tell them that they weren't going to have to leave Charlotte. They're going to get to stay. They had their best friends, you know, right down the street from them. And they will not have to leave their best friends and move to Greenville, where I thought we were moving. They come in together, the boy and a girl twin. The little boy just said, man, that's great. And he took off the door to run down the street to his friend Philip's house to tell Philip that he wasn't moving and they'd still be best friends and neighbors. Anna, who also had a best friend down the street, seemed a little quieter about it and seemed to disappear. After a few minutes, I told Peggy I was going to go upstairs and see what Anna was doing. She was in her bedroom, sitting on her bed. She had crocodile tears 
coming down her cheek. I literally got on my knees beside her bed, took her little hands in mine, and I said, Anna, sweetheart, I don't think you understood. I said, we're not going to move. You get to stay here uh, and be with all your friends. And in the way that only a wise young one can do, she looked at me and, and said, basically, Dad, you're the one that doesn't understand. Last time you were with IJL, I never saw you. My epitaph to her at that point in time would have been, I never saw him. My epitaph from her, I never saw him. Her father. Don't ever, don't ever, ever, ever make that mistake in your life. Think about that epitaph and think about how those around you are thinking of you in your life. I'm going to leave you with one possibility. I've thought, okay, how can I convey this? How can I get people to think about passion and epitaph as they're choosing and pursuing their lives? Passion's easy. You, you, you feel that. That's internal. You'll know whether you're in the right spot. You'll know by how excited you are about going to work. You'll know by how excited you are about the people you're working with. You'll know by how proud you are of the platform and what it's accomplishing. You'll know whether you've got a passion for it. Thinking about each day, whether, what kind of an epitaph you're writing for yourself is different. So maybe what I, I might leave you just a recommendation that some of you could take. Maybe what you, we need to do is create a to-be list. Most all of us have had to-do lists in our lives before. But maybe a to-be list makes sense. And maybe all you do is just decide who is it that you want to be, and you make a list that would have the characteristics of that person, and just check it maybe every night. And if you're, if you're off track, great. Rejuvenate yourself. Redirect yourself. Refocus yourself. And remember the next day to be more the person you want to be. It's almost like taking, I mean, I guess a lot of y'all saw the movie The Bucket List. That was all about a to-do list. You know, the, the two, it was an incredible movie if you haven't seen it, by the way. But these men, were going, they had certain things they wanted to do before they kicked the bucket. Uh, so take that whole concept and go to a to-be list and measure yourself and keep, that, keep yourself not too far from that path of being who you want to be. Uh, I can't create your list for you. You'll have to do that. Uh, you're the ones that determine your legacy and your epitaph. But just remember, it's not going to be what you achieved that determines it, just like it wasn't for my father. It's going to be who you are. And by letting who you are determine what that epithet is all about, you will be successful in the truest of ways beyond your wildest dreams. I know that there are plenty of places to go to look for good epitaphs. I mean, there, there are tons of them. I have some of my favorites that I've modeled myself after. A couple of them happen to be in the Bible. There's a great one. I fought the good fight. I've always thought, man, wouldn't that be great if somebody could say that about me when I left this earth? Another one is, it is finished, which implies I've completed my task on this earth. That would be great. You've got other sources you can go to where you can find great epitaphs that might ring home with you. But I just urge you to pay attention to it and do it.